In one of our lectures, we understood the big O notation. We learned what is big O notation and how it is useful in describing the upper bound of an algorithm. Now, in this presentation, we will discuss the second type of asymptotic notation, and the name of this notation is big omega notation. So, let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The topic of this lecture is the big omega notation. In this lecture, we will understand the big omega notation in details. So, let's get started and let's understand the big omega notation. So, what is the big omega notation? The big omega notation describes the lower bound of an algorithm. So, this notation helps in describing the lower bound of an algorithm. Now, what is the meaning of lower bound? We learned that big O notation tells the upper bound of an algorithm and this means if fn and gn are two functions and fn is equal to big O of gn, then gn is asymptotically bigger than fn or in other words, fn cannot grow more than gn. And this is the meaning of upper bound. gn is called the upper bound of fn. On the other hand, the big omega notation tells the lower bound of an algorithm. This means if fn and gn are two functions and fn is equal to omega of gn, then gn is asymptotically lesser than fn or in other words, fn cannot grow lesser than gn. So, gn is called the lower bound of fn. And big omega notation describes the lower bound of an algorithm. And this means it is used to express the best case running time of an algorithm. We are talking about the running time, but we can talk about the memory space also. But we know time is the most important factor, so we are only talking about the time. Big Omega notation is used to express the best case running time of an algorithm because it describes the lower bound of an algorithm. This means an algorithm cannot grow lesser than a specific time. For example, if an algorithm takes omega of n square time, this means that the best case running time of that algorithm is n square. This means it cannot perform better than n square. On the other hand, we know in case of big O notation, it is used to express the worst case running time of an algorithm. Why it expresses the worst case running time? Because it describes the upper bound of an algorithm and this means that an algorithm cannot perform worse than a specific time. If let's say we are saying that an algorithm takes big O of n square time, then we know that that algorithm cannot perform worse than n square. So now I hope the distinction between the big omega and the big O notation is completely clear. Now let me propose the definition of the big omega notation. Assuming fn and gn are non-negative functions, fn is equal to big omega of gn or we can say fn is omega of gn if and only if fn is greater than or equal to c dot gn or c into gn for some c greater than 0 and for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. Now, what does this definition mean? We know what is the definition of the big O notation. In case of big O notation, fn is big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c dot gn. But in this case, we have fn is greater than or equal to c dot gn. In place of less than or equal to, we have greater than or equal to in case of big omega notation. and the rest of the definition is same as big O notation. This is true for some c greater than 0 and for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught, where c and n naught are constants. 
So C is some constant and N naught is also some constant. If we are saying Fn is omega of Gn, then Fn must be greater than or equal to C dot Gn for some constant C greater than 0 and for all N values greater than or equal to N naught. So the difference we can observe here is the greater than or equal to sign. And of course, in place of big O, we have big omega here. So this is the definition of the big omega notation. So one thing is clear from this definition that after some point n naught, fn is always greater than or equal to c into gn, or in other words, fn cannot grow lesser than c into gn after some n naught. And that is why we can say fn is equal to omega of gn. So with this, we now know the definition of the big omega notation. It tells the best case running time of an algorithm. Also, it tells the best case memory consumption of an algorithm. But we are not worrying about memory consumption for now. We are focusing on the running time as it is the most important factor. Now, one thing to note is that fn equal to big omega of gn means that gn is the asymptotic tight lower bound of fn. And what is the meaning of tight lower bound? We understood what is the meaning of lower bound. Just like we can have many upper bounds of a function, we can have many lower bounds of a function. Out of those lower bounds, the closest lower bound to a function is called the tight lower bound. So, gn is the asymptotic tight lower bound of fn when we say fn is equal to omega of gn. Although we can write any lower bound here, but usually it is best to write the tight lower bound here. So, I hope it is clear what is the meaning of tight lower bound. Now, let's represent fn and c into gn on the graph. This is the graphical representation of fn and c into gn of the omega notation. From this graph, it is clear that after some n naught, fn always grows more than c into gn. Or in other words, c into gn is the lower bound of fn. In case of big O notation, we observed that fn cannot grow more than c into gn after some n naught. This means fn was below c into gn. But this time we have fn above c into gn after n naught. Before n naught, we can observe that fn is sometimes bigger than c into gn. And sometimes it is lesser than c into gn. But after n naught, we are sure that fn always grows more than c into gn. That is why we can say that after n naught, fn is greater than or equal to c into gn. And hence, fn is equal to big omega of gn. So, I hope with this graph, the concept of the big omega notation is more clear. So, with this, we understood the big omega notation and this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.